dingbat! I'm ready to go! Then, when it's all said and done, you're gonna go to the diner and you get a physical. You better get your prostate exam. Go get your prostate exam. No more waiting. Get it done! Oh, I'm not getting that done. I'm not getting that done. I know. I'm not getting that done. You're 42 years old! Get it done! Look at you. Look at you. Yo everybody, how you doing? King Ding Bat here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel, to my video. Today I'm going to talk about something a little different, and I want to do this before I put out my Super Bowl 52 prediction show, but I want to go out and I want to talk about something that has been flooding my comments, flooding my, my sections of, of videos when I put something out. It's all people want to talk about with links and all sorts of stuff. And that is, is the NFL rigged or scripted? Is the NFL rigged or scripted? This is a, a very interesting question. Now, if you know me, you know I am head, knee deep, whatever you want to call it, into conspiracy theories. I love them. I love them. Some of them I believe. Some of them I don't. But I'm always willing to listen. Okay? So that's what I do. A lot of times I just watch videos and people that know me they'll tell you, I, sometimes I'm up to five, six in the morning watching conspiracy theory stuff and just learn, absorbing what I can, okay? So there's this whole subject of basically is the NFL rigged or scripted? Now, there's two answers to this question. The first answer is Using Gematra, which if you don't know is basically like a historical Jewish numerology type thing, you know, and um, in my opinion, when it comes to Gematra and, and these kind of things and Bible codes and those kinds, they're very interesting and they're very fascinating. Um, but there's a place for them and there's not a place for them, okay? Now, there are a lot of people out there today, they're online, on YouTube, and they're sitting there telling you that they know Gematra. They know the codes. They know everything. And using this, they can tell you pretty much what is going to happen in the NFL, in the NBA, in the NHL. And they set up like um, PayPal accounts, FundMe accounts. Patreon, those kind of things, and people go and they donate, and then they give them predictions of what's going to happen in weekly games, that kind of stuff, and people bet on this, and they think that they're ha they have some inside information, they're going to make a lot of money. The problem is, is that these guys are wrong. They're wrong, okay? A lot of times, after the fact, they'll go in, they'll come back with their gematra and their codes, and they'll say, see, this is why this happened and this happened and this number explains this number. But it's after the fact. But when they have to actually predict a game, they get it wrong. What do I mean? I watched this stuff for two years. I watched them say the Colts would be in the Super Bowl next year playing either the Vikings or the Arizona Cardinals. Because Dennis Smith was sacrificed. Dennis Smith, Dennis Green, I'm sorry. Dennis Green was sacrificed. And he had been the head coach of Arizona and of Minnesota. And so one of those two teams would flourish off of his sacrifice. Total, total garbage. 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 Dingbadishness. Because why? Because they were wrong. They were wrong. Now here's the thing. When you deal with Jewish numerology and Bible codes and, and, and scriptures and all that kind of stuff. And you start saying that you can make predictions that you have prophecies, God spoke to you, God, you figured out this code that God put. When you start acting like you know it, okay, then here's the thing. You have to be 100% right all the time. All the time, you have to be 100% correct. If you're wrong one time, then you're wrong. You lose all credibility, okay? It's not an opinion like when I gave my opinion about Derek Barnett in the draft and I was wrong. I could say I was wrong. That was an opinion. But when you start saying that you know the code, 
you know what God's thinking or you know what all this stuff means and then you go out and get it wrong then you lose credibility and too many of these guys got it wrong they said Colts Vikings Colts Cardinals they said Oakland so one of them, a couple of them said Oakland Raiders will win the Super Bowl this year okay they predicted what they predicted the Cavaliers um to play uh, Golden State and come back for three. That's not a big prediction. That wasn't a big deal. But a lot of their stuff is after the fact. And after the fact, to me, once you're wrong, you lose credibility forever. And and that's the way I see it. So I don't buy Jamatra for predicting sports. Now, to put my money where my mouth is, because I'm not just talking out my butt, but next year, when the NFL season starts, we will go, I will put, I don't know, we'll start with $25. We'll go to one of these sites and we'll document this heavily. And we will put money on a prediction each week that they make. And we will let that money ride all year. And we'll see how right they are. We will see, because we're gonna go and we're gonna test it. Let's test it. I'm betting, I'm willing to bet two to three weeks they're wrong. They're gonna get something wrong. Now, do people make mistakes and get things wrong sometimes? Yeah. But if you claim to know and then you keep getting it wrong, it's not good enough. You can't put yourself that high up and then get things wrong. I don't have any tolerance for prophecy, for people who think who claim that they know some code from, from ancient Jewish numerology. When you get it wrong, you've lost all credibility. That's not an opinion, okay? Now, in my opinion, how the NFL is rigged is simple two ways one look at the draft not only the nfl draft but look at the nba look at the nhl you can't tell me that these owners don't make sure that certain marketable players go to bigger cities and bigger markets it's just the way it is nobody can convince me otherwise and there's proof of this in the nfl if you go and you look at the joe namath draft people have admitted that the owners colluded and made sure that namath ended up with the New York Jets. Remember, the NFL shares revenue amongst the owners, okay? Now, where I think the NFL is actually rigged, okay, get up the hat, but where I think it's actually rigged is when you look at the point spreads. When you look at the point spreads and you have owners who make enormous amounts of money, players that make enormous amounts of money, and you have these referees that they don't make a lot of money, okay? Comparison, they don't make a ton of money, but they can control a lot of money, okay? They can manipulate a point spread, okay? If they can manipulate a point spread without changing the outcome of a game, they can make a lot of money on, on it. And they justify it by not changing the outcome of the game, but controlling the point spread. I think the owners are in on it. I think the referees are in on it. And I think that you may get a game like, let's say the Patriots are favored by 10 and a half. It's late in the fourth quarter. They're up 13. Team throws a bomb. The guy catches the ball. They throw the flag. Oh, holding, bring the play back. That one penalty here or there can change a point spread dramatically. And that's where I think the NFL is fixed. It's not fixed and scripted and who wins a Super Bowl each year and that kind of stuff. Remember, the owners, they share revenue. They're all making billions of dollars. But manipulating the point spread for referees that may not make as much money and I think the referees do this okay I think the owners probably know this goes on and that kind of thing and that's the way it goes so that's how I kind of see it and how I see this whole thing playing out and how it's basically rigged but using Jamatra and that kind of stuff I disagree because they've proven to be wrong already oh! You want to why I'm fight? I'm fight! Oh, very sorry, you're a video, I don't hear I ain't even fair, you want to come to Minnesota, we'll take you out. You've been warned. Do not come to Minnesota. Do not eat at our restaurants, do not sleep in our hotels. You are not welcome. We will take every one of you out. Like this thing, man. Come on, man. Ha!
Now will King Dingbat get out of this one and prevent his head from being crushed to a million Dingbat pieces? How will he stop Frank? And how will he get his Super Bowl preview video out? Find out on the next Philly 500.